G'day, my name's Louis. This is the Sunday Run. Uh oh, I'm a bit nervous. Welcome, everyone, to the episode one of the Sunday Run. Uh, this is pretty big for me. I'm starting a podcast and I'm doing it on my own for a little bit, which is exciting, uh, also somewhat nerve wracking because talking to yourself is pretty difficult for a while. But I'm going to introduce myself, explain exactly what I'm here to do and, and my goals and hopefully you guys can get something out of it um, and hopefully I can get something out of it. So let's start with like what you're going to be doing while you're listening to this podcast. I think a lot of people are expecting me to just sit here and talk about running for the next 40 minutes. Uh, that's not going to be the case. I, I couldn't tell you. I could probably talk about running for 10 minutes, but 40 minutes of running isn't going to happen. So you might want to listen to this uh, while you're running, which is great. And if you do that, I'll give you a little check-ins throughout the podcast. But I could never listen to a podcast while running. So I totally understand if that's not the case. Anyway, who am I? What do I do? And why you should listen? Let's get into it. So I'm just an average Aussie bloke who's found a huge benefit in being fit and healthy. So much so that I'm genuinely obsessed with having people feel what I feel. Hence Sunday Run. My name's Louis. I'm 24 living in Melbourne, Australia. I'm a full-time content creator, entrepreneur, podcast host, and enjoyer of beers. Now, the beers part is obviously doesn't kind of fit into life or the life I'm trying to live, but I actually see it as a hugely important part. And, you know, for those listening, like the beers part can be anything. You know, they can be just hanging out with friends. You don't have to be drinking, obviously. But in Australia, we've got a huge drinking culture. So I suppose that's what it is for me. I've been interested in sport my whole life, playing Aussie rules football since I was seven and generally just getting involved in anything that requires movement. We'll find out a little bit more about that in a bit. Running has only come into fruition for me in the last two years. To be honest, I hated it before I learned how to actually enjoy it. That's why I want to show you. I had a hugely negative connotation in regard to running. The beep tests in school, 2K time trials, hill sprints, the list goes on. That's been like a really big thing for me to battle recently is, is trying to fall in love with running again. And I think I'm getting there and obviously you guys are helping me along the way. That's not the kind of, kind of running you should be doing to enjoy it. Obviously that's in regards to the beep test and so on. Like running in general has been something that I've like slowly learned to love. Uh, like playing footy my whole life, 2K time trials, that kind of thing really kind of, it's just like such high intensity stuff that it hurts. Uh, and then obviously you hate, learn to hate running. So that's not what I want. The stuff I've been preaching lately has been that uh, lower heart rate, smooth, chilled running where you actually enjoy it. Um, and we've been able to create the Sunday run uh, kind of series because of that. For those that are running, uh, you're doing really well. Keep going. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking about you and you got to keep keep running. I know, I know it hurts. You know, you're probably 500 to a kilometer in and you just got to keep pushing. So my passions, this episode is going to be a lot about me. It's a bit of me time, to be honest. My passions, uh, obviously there's the, the obvious ones. We've got running, podcasting, content creation, and helping people. Those are like the kind of main pillars, but that's pretty boring stuff. In general, I froth cars. I'm like a really big car person. Uh, the next car I want, I reckon it's going to be a Toyota Century. My dream car, which is like, you know, long-term, a Porsche GT2 RS. And my impossible dream car is a Ferrari F40. That's, I think they're worth two and a half million at the moment. So I've got a, I've got a little bit of a way to go. Uh, I love spending time with family. I've got a really close family and I'm really, I'm, I'm looking to get them on the podcast. So hopefully you guys can tolerate that. Uh, Mum and dad, luckily enough, have a farm. So I try and head up there a fair bit, uh, which is like a beautiful part of Victoria. I play footy. Um, I love comedy. Theo Von, Louis C.K., Shane Gillis. I love animals and I'm very single. <laughs> so if you're single, let me know. Uh, what is Sunday Run? I've created Sunday Run on the back of identifying the clear want people have to be fit, healthy, and happy. It's difficult to navigate your way through social media without feeling like you need to do something super extraordinary to achieve the above. That's obviously not the case. I feel like I can offer help to people in this rut. So I've decided to release an ongoing running program every Sunday for the next six weeks for both beginner and more advanced levels. You'll receive the program on a Sunday, which will tell you exactly what to do for that week and then come back next Sunday and do it all again. So like the reason I've done it in that format, you know, I, I could create this six week program, which I've obviously already done and just send like the six weeks to you. But straight away, people lose interest. Straight away, I've lost a whole lot of people who 
like require bite-sized bits of information. So it's a lot easier. Well, it's a lot better for you if you receive your program every Sunday with three sessions, a really manageable amount, and then you're able to go out and run and just like focus on those three sessions. Just don't worry about the next weeks to come. It's just those three sessions. So that's why I've split it up into the way I have. Uh, I've always wanted to do something like this and kind of do it in a in a way that allows others to feel what I'm feeling. And I think this is the best way to go about it. So let's get into the point of this podcast. I really don't want it to be running specific. Uh, I, I don't, whilst I kind of have been pigeonholed into being this runner, um, I'm definitely not one dimensional and running is just a small part of my life. Uh, obviously I lift weights, I go to the gym and in general just like being healthy and happy. Uh, so running isn't the number one kind of topic on this podcast, but it will be something we glimpse over in, in most episodes. For example, getting guests on, I'd love to ask them about if they incorporate running into their life, how and, and why they do it and kind of go from there. Uh, but it won't be the main, main topic. So if you ever send in questions, it doesn't have to be regarding running. Another kind of big point for this podcast will be the development. I'm super into like personal development. I'm not Gary Vee, don't worry, but I am into kind of um, seeing how we can grow and all learn. I've really found a knack for learning in the last kind of two years, I'd say. Uh, I really want to scratch up on my interviewing skills. Interviewing is difficult. Uh, it's pretty intense, but doing a solo podcast is even more difficult. So if I can do get through this podcast, I can do the other interviews. And then I want a lot of involvement from you guys. So send in messages. If you want to send in a voice voice message and I can play it through the podcast, I'd be happy to do that. Um, if there's if you're following me or listening to this and you want to come on the podcast, mate, let's talk about it. Let me know. I'll I'll think about doing that for sure. If you can hold a conversation and you don't get too scared by the lights and the cameras, then like, absolutely. That'd be so much fun and I'd love to hear more from you. Uh, and then the other thing is like potential guests. I'm thinking family members. I'm thinking friends. I'm thinking plenty of runners. I'm thinking CEOs, corporates, um, people from like all walks of life. I don't want this to be a podcast where I just get like another AFL player and we talk about, you know, beers and the boys. Um, I really want to make sure we get a lot out of this. So let me know who you guys want to get on and we'll go from there. Let's get into the plan for the sun, for Sunday run going forward. So Sunday run, kind of the business, I guess you could call it. I obviously want to keep making running accessible for everyone. That's been like the most rewarding part of this first week of releasing this program is like being able to see all the people that are like getting involved in a running program for the first time, mainly because it's free. Like they, they aren't so into running that they would buy a program, but they're into the idea of like having a program and following it and they want to download it for free. So like seeing the accessibility I've been able to create just by having a free program has been life changing for me in the last couple of days. So I'm looking to continue doing that. Um, and, and we'll do that with Sunday run. And obviously I, I will look to um, create some kind of payment way if people are keen on that. Uh, another point is develop a way in which I become closer to my followers, clients and general audience. I think, I'd like to make an app is the plan. Create an app and like we can have chat rooms in there and everyone can kind of be a big community. We can all go for runs together. It's big, big plans here, team. Uh, and then build this podcast and have different guests on. Obviously, who do you want to see? So yeah, that's kind of, that's Sunday run for you. Uh, the reason I've called it Sunday run is because I've got this business Sunday lounge alongside my sister. And I thought it just matched up nicely. It kind of works into this whole Sunday run, you know, Sunday running and coffee kind of vibe that is, is really handy. And, and I think it kind of hits a niche that I've never really, really been able to hit before. I've said in like a few other podcasts that, you know, um, the audience that I have through all of this has been like really surprising. Like I've never been able to hit this kind of audience and that's you know, all kind of ages, but it's definitely getting into the more mature side now of kind of like older men and women, um, a, lo- a lot of mums, which is great. Uh, and kind of, yeah, a lot of, uh, just a really diverse range, which I'm really proud of. And I like, I'm glad that it's hitting that, that audience because I feel like those people connect really well with me. So thanks so much for coming along for the ride. I wanted to go through my schooling life because I feel like it's um, somewhat different to a few people, uh, like school didn't come easy to me at all. 
And I think it's a topic that a lot of people can kind of resonate with. They either know a friend like this or, you know, are this themselves. But hugely ADHD, auditory processing, and just like never interested in like any of the coursework. Um, lucky enough that dad was a teacher. So he obviously put me into... Um, Oh, well, he just like put a lot of, invested a lot of time and effort, both mum and dad did, but into my learning. Um, dad recognized like early days, it was just like mainstream learning wasn't for me. So I got put into a, a Steiner school, which is an alternative form of learning. And it was really fantastic for me, learning with your hands, like just like a, a completely different way of learning that really, I'd say changed my brain and really got creative juices flowing for me. So Steiner's different in that like, so you're learning with your hands, but I guess you could call it like a hip, hippie kind of way of learning, but learning with your hands, like you learn maths by, you know, looking at like, they have like special gnomes for different like times tables. Like they have like an, a, a red gnome for times tables or like, you know, a yellow gnome for division and so on. So it's very like visual form of learning um, and great for kids who are unable to kind of just write something down and, and absorb it. So from an early age, I was kind of told I learned differently. Not that that was a negative thing, but I, I really understood that like school wasn't for me. And, you know, if I could go back and change one thing, it's that like, I wish I had more belief in myself from a young age, especially in regards to school, because I can do all of that kind of stuff. It's just not necessarily coursework that I can do. So I did Steiner, which was fantastic for me. And it got me to a point where I was able to kind of feed into a mainstream system. Uh, very lucky enough to go to uh, Wesley, a private school here in Melbourne. Um, and then I finished year 12 there. Also just like, a fair bit of travel on the way through, you know, nothing too bad. I wasn't a, a nasty kid, but I was just like, just not interested in any of the schoolwork. And then school finished and like, I, I went to uni, I'm still there, but this whole kind of, kind of plethora of ideas opened up for me. I said, I want to go to uni straight away. Mum and dad said, no, you're not allowed to. You have to go on a gap year, which is probably pretty rare from parents, but shout out to, shout out to them. Um, so I did a gap year and I actually went to the south of France to work on private yachts as a deckhand. And I did that for a couple of months and it was life changing for me, 18, going overseas and, and just kind of, you know, sitting in a space where I'm uncomfortable the whole time. It was the most reflection I had ever done in my life up to that point. And it was a real opportunity for me to kind of look internally and understand what's going on. I had moments where I realized I'd, you know, gone like, four days without talking to someone on a deeper level other than just service sur like surface level conversation which was just like crazy for me i also learned that when i'd walk anywhere i had to listen to music like why couldn't i just sit there with my thoughts so i think all these things were like really good learnings for me at an as an 18 year old on top of that obviously i had a fair bit of like work on yachts um i worked on a russian oligarchs yacht I couldn't say the name i like i wasn't allowed to work on it when the owner was on board um what else like i the whole whole system of of yachting is is pretty cooked but yeah i couldn't wasn't allowed to speak russian to work on that boat uh and they did like full background checks they probably know way too much about me so that experience was fantastic and i constantly get questions regarding that so if you're looking to get into that i'd say do a lot of your research it's a pretty crazy industry but it's an industry that's just picked back up after covid so uh, definitely worth checking that out. So lucky enough with the school I went to, I got some amazing friends and a really tight knit group of friends. I'm super close with my friends. We see each other, you know, pretty much every single day. We call definitely like three times a day and just like froth spending time together. I figured like the happiest I am in my life is spending time with my boys, like just kicking it with them. I love going out on a Saturday, but I love even more being hung over with them on a Sunday watching the footy and just complaining about how sore our heads are. Like that is literally living for me. So um, really tight group of friends and uh, yeah, something I'm super thankful for. Let's continue on. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a funny format talking to yourself, but I want to explain what I do for work. Cause like I'm not, I'm not employed by anyone. Um, I own my own businesses and like, I just do my own thing. I called my boss the other day and my own phone rang. Sorry, I'll save that. <laughs> it's just shit chat. <laughs> Sorry. All right, back on. Uh, so what I do for work, uh, exactly. Like I'm a con full-time content creator. I uh, run 9to5 Fitness alongside my mate Gab, Anabolic Gabe, which I'll continue to do. Uh, and like I get money from selling programs, firstly, which I sell an athletic-based resistance program. And that keeps a roof over my head. You can check that out if you want. Uh, and then also like brand deals. So we're ve I'm very fortunate that 
I get deals throughout my life where like I promote a product through social media and like have it in my videos, have it in my content and then they'll pay me a certain amount. So that's like, that's my main form of income. Uh, and that's a really hard balance between, well, it's not, it's actually not a hard balance, but it is a balance uh, between trying to stay loyal to your followers and your fans, but then also trying to make money on the side. So I could go out and get a $50,000 gambling deal, but it might be a bit, mean to my followers wouldn't it? especially the ones that have a gambling issue so i'm not going to do that but trying to balance between getting a fair bit of money and also promoting a product you love is is really hard and it's a it's a balance that i've struck so nicely especially in the last six months i um i'm affiliated with a fair few companies i'll name a few and there's a few in the works at the moment but like whoop for one which is kind of it's like a, a sleep tracking it's a, a lifestyle tracking device which I would use regardless of if I was paid or not. So like that, there's a, a great idea for of like one that I really like. Um, a live symbiotic, which is, it's like a healthy soft drink, essentially. It's really good for you. And it's something I would drink regardless of if they sponsored me or not. But I'm affiliated with that brand and I absolutely love them. We've got a whole lot more coming. And I think by the time this podcast is out, I should have a really big one, which I'm really excited about. So hopefully like the brand deal stuff, if you're interested in it, I'm happy to talk more about it, but hopefully it doesn't kind of deter anyone. Um, just understand that that's how I keep a roof over my head. I wanted to get into goals for this year. Obviously, like 2023 for me has been mental. I'm a month or two months in and I have gotten 130,000 followers on Instagram, which is outrageous. Uh, I've developed a full running program that is like accessible to anyone and my kind of my fitness and my happiness is at an all-time high so 2023 has been a great start and i've got some huge things coming my goals for this year is to obviously launch sunday run to a point that it's like super self-sufficient uh i really want to interact with you guys more like on a personal level on a like point that we can go for runs together so i'm going to be starting a sunday run club i want to do a lot of travel as well hopefully maybe a couple of weeks in Vietnam mid-year, maybe Europe at the end of the year slash South America. That'd be fun. And in general, I just want to positively affect lives. A real toss up, tossing point for me for my the last five years of my life is should I get a motorbike? So my goal is to figure that out. I've, I've got my license and I'll have my full time, full motorbike license at the end of the year, but I also don't want to die. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But yeah, so I don't know, Sunday run is, is looking good and um, that's my main goal for this year and I can't wait for you guys to hear about what else we have coming because there are some big things coming. Now, normally I'd throw into a uh, kind of product plug here, but I've got no products that sponsor me. So if you want to sponsor this show, shoot me a DM. If you want to, if you got a, a product or something you want to sponsor and I actually like it or you think I like it, shoot me a DM and, and we can chat because you could be the first, the inaugural sponsor of Sunday run. And maybe we can fit it in right here. Uh, but before we do that, if you're running, you're a fair way into your run now and you're going really well. So just keep going, keep breathing. I find the trick in these latter stages of running is to think about your form for a second. Pull back, sit up, stand up, pull your, pull your head up, lift your chin, inhale heavily to the deep sacs of your lungs, swing those arms and uh, keep moving those legs. A good thing to think about at this point in your run is to do slow little steps, like, sorry, fast little steps. So make your steps pretty short, but think you're a sewing machine. Like you're just going for it, like a little rabbit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's what you need to do. Now, I put out a story the other day um, on my Instagram saying, Q&A, send in some questions. And you guys understood the assignment. So shout out to you. Thanks so much for that. And I'm about to delve into the questions. But just before we do that, for future episodes, it doesn't have to be running based. Like all these questions are pretty much regarding running. Um, I don't know if my mum can sit through 40 minutes of me talking about running. So I, I want to keep, she's my target audience of retaining the listeners. So she might have switched off by this point. So if you have any, like literally ask me questions about anything, I'll get people on in regards to your questions and really try and give you the best possible entertaining answers. Let's get into our first segment of Q&As. Rory Bell. 17 says what are your goals for sunday run programs it's a great question and i get the sense 
that some people are a little bit apprehensive with what I want to do. Obviously, I have put out these programs for free. And it's just like, you put your email in, you get a program, and I'm going to do that for at least six weeks, probably longer. Um, so like, I totally get that people are a little bit nervous about that. And I do want to eventually start making money out of it, but I do plan to always have running accessible for everyone. So I do plan to always have a free program and I will always do that. It's just going to be the base. Like you're always going to get a free program from me. Granted you support me and like, um, you know, keep doing the programs. Now to further that, I do want to turn like my plans for, for monetizing it would be to like offer ex- like add-ons and extensions. So people training for marathons, people training for half marathons. I'm going to get sports and exercise scientists involved to help me create the best program possible. I also want to do weight training on the side, like the side of that, give you guys the best weight training exercises and stuff to complement, you know, yourself and like not just running, but your life. So my, my goal for that is to create programs, but also do it on a service that's kind of like a subscription-based service because that's honestly the way to go in the fitness industry. So thanks so much for your question, Rory. Um, hopefully that settles some nerves in regards to what I'm doing. I'm not a Fortnite scammer. Right, next up. Will Richardson. How do you manage to go for a run when you're hungover? And it's a great question, Will. I put out a Instagram TikTok the other day of me kind of being vulnerable and saying, oh, I went out last night. I'm a little bit hungover. I had a few tokes of a vape, but this is what I do to get over my hangover and it's going for a run. And naturally, you get a lot of middle-aged white blokes saying, mate, when I used to drink properly, I couldn't bloody get out and walk the next day. I couldn't, I, I was bedded for the next three days. Firstly, you're not my target audience. If that's you, like, yep, yeah, fair enough. I, I've, I've been through that, but like probably not going to be able to go for a run the next day. The tip to being able to run when you're hungover is drinking smart, okay? And look, you can still go out and have, have a fair crack, and I do, don't get me wrong, but the trick to drinking smart is always going to sleep hung, uh, sober. If you have been out on the town, maybe pull back on those last couple of beers and switch over to waters and just give yourself like an hour or two or an hour or two of no drinking before you go to bed. Now that sounds pretty difficult, but trust me it's not that hard. You can do it. I believe in you. If you can go to bed without those head spins, without kind of yeah, whilst you're sober, you will wake up feeling so much better. So my tip to going for a run when you're hungover is to actually drink smart and and go to bed sober. Now the actual run itself, like it's hard to find the motivation for that. Don't get me wrong. It sucks. But it's the first kilometer hurts the most and then it's sweet. So my recommendation for you is to just like force yourself out of bed, get some water in, get a coffee in and just move those legs. And and you don't have to go for a run. It doesn't have to be a run. Just get some movement in when you're hungover. It'll settle your anxiety. Trust me, I get hectic anxiety. Uh, anxiety, that is, yeah. It'll settle like the pain you have in your head and it'll just set your day up a whole lot better. So I really would recommend looking into going for hangover runs and setting your week up properly. Great question, Will. Thanks for that, mate. George Freith says, what's your biggest problem you've had to overcome with running? And it's a good question. I could go two routes with this one. Like, the first one is is injury wise, and it's something I'm really battling at the moment. Uh, and those around me would kind of know about it, but I can barely walk after I go for a run at this stage, which is proving to be an issue. And that's the mixture of trying to run enough to make plenty of content for you guys, but also trying to train hard enough to be in great nick for when footy season comes around. Because we're in we're in footy season pretty much at the moment, like pre season, um, post Christmas pre season. So the training's will be ramping up. So. Injury-wise has been my biggest obstacle. I've got this excruciating tendonitis in my right heel and I thought I had it sorted and I thought I knew exactly what to do to fix it, but proving to be not the case. And it's more and more aiming towards the fact I need to just rest and not run. That's pretty difficult to do when your whole personality is built around running at this stage. Uh, The other direction I can go with that is my... Uh, like like mental, you know, trying to 
Like that's been a challenge. I, I go through ups and downs of motivation and I've always preached I don't rely on motivation, but sometimes you kind of have to rely on motivation to be honest. So the, the, the biggest struggle I've had in terms of mental is going through slumps where it's like, oh, I don't really want to run, but like I need to do it, especially for a content perspective. But I, I also need to do it because I'll feel better after. I'm probably in one of those slumps at the moment. I've said I'd do a... I'm aiming for a sub 40 minute 10K, but man, like with all the running I'm doing in terms of footy and like my body breaking down, it's just, I just don't know if it's possible. So I'm, I'm really struggling to get out on the track at the moment. So those two are like my two biggest things. And you know what I'm doing in regards to that mental, well, I'm trying to win. Like I'm trying to get out there and, and make sure I'm, I'm running, but it's, it's proving to be difficult. So yeah, hope that answers you, answers your question, George. Georgia Djokovic underscore PT says, if you could only run one distance for the rest of your life, what would you do? It's a great question. Very running based. Uh, 10Ks. I love running 10Ks. It's just like my favorite distance. It has every emotion in it. First K you feel, first couple of Ks you feel good. And then like K, you know, five, six, even seven, you feel pretty atrocious. And then the last couple of Ks, you just fly home and you feel really fit. So I'd run 10Ks every day for the rest of my life if I could. Um, what would yours be? I'd love to know. Let me know. Thanks for the question. Luke Frost says, how to get motivation to run when you live in England and the weather is so effing shit? It's a good question. We get rough weather here in Melbourne. Maybe not as bad as England, but it gets pretty atrocious and... There's something in embracing the vibe of a winter run. Like, look, it doesn't have to be fast and you don't have to be the quickest runner out there, but if you can embrace the vibe of winter running, get some gloves on, put a beanie on, like even a jacket, like a soft shell jacket, and just get out there and like Rocky Balboa, just hustle it, swing those arms and get moving, get the blood flowing. I think you'll make it a lot easier. I don't have any other tips. Like I don't have any secrets for you that is going to kind of, change your life mate, to be honest but one that's kind of changed my life in regards to running in winter is is like embrace the vibe like make it cool make it exciting and like I, I just love that idea of going for a run in the freezing cold when it's bucketing down with rain and then like the endorphins you feel after that get in front of a fire get in front of a heater snuggle up with a towel and a you know hot chocolate and you'll be sweet hopefully this is making you guys want to go for a run because it makes me want to go for a run Jacqueline Rogers says best running playlist. Now I don't have one for you, Jack. I'm sorry, but I do have things to talk about in regards to running and music. Uh, my running, my music taste is all over the show. I listen to literally everything. So you've got to find your knack and kind of stick with that to an extent. Like it can be diverse, but like I can't do scream or people screaming in my ears, but I can do like soft music i always say like music that makes me want to cry like i love running to that i love gymming to that kind of stuff so um i'm not going to make a running playlist for everyone because if i enjoy listening to it there's a good chance you won't but good luck finding your knack couple to go here you guys are you're doing well axel oh sorry yeah axel colin colinago says hey louis who was your inspiration when it came to starting the running content it's a great question, mate, and, and thanks so much for, for writing. And this is, I love this direction of the content, uh, sorry, of the questions. No one specifically for the running, from the running field was my inspiration. A lot of people kind of said to me, oh, Nick Bear, like my content's like Nick Bear. I've honestly, I've never watched Nick Bear, but I'm sure he's doing great stuff. So I'm not actually that inspired by him. I've just been feeling the need to help people of recently. It's a real thing that's kind of come over me and something I just want to continue to push and like, not necessarily ask for remuneration, just like help people in general and then see what happens. My dad's always been a huge advocate for adding value and helping kind of improve people's lives. I think the route I was going down before this was like almost a bit of a bodybuilding vibe, which I find a little bit narcissistic and a little bit toxic. Like it's very much like put on as much mass as possible, feel like shit because you're never going to look like anyone else and just look after yourself the whole time. So my dad kind of didn't didn't say anything in regards to that, but he, he's he's never really been huge on the bodybuilding side. So he's always been on the, the helping side. So I found that I just needed to change that. 
Um, and like dad's always been huge on helping people and just adding value in a, in a sense that's not transactional in a sense. that's not, I give you something you give me. Like you can help people without getting something back. So I'd say my biggest inspiration to, in regards to my running content, especially recently has been my dad and he couldn't run further than a hundred meters. So shout out to him. Thanks for the question, mate. Uh, La Laura Harland or Lara Harland says, what do you enjoy most about your running? Um, yeah, it's definitely the mental space for me. Like I, I just get into such a good mental space and such a driven mindset when I am running and especially after I'm running. If I've done 10 Ks that morning, it's like the movie Limitless. It's literally like I've just had a modafinil and I'm locking in for the day and I am so creative. I'm so effective and my kind of drive is at an all-time high. So definitely the mental side of it. If I have anything going wrong in my life, you know, like if I like if there's girl troubles, if there's... Uh, like family issues or whatever, then like going for a run just clears my head in a way that's just like so perfect and it's so necessary. Um, so yeah, that would be kind of number one for me is the mental side. Um, another one that I actually really like is I I can kind of stay very lean when I run and retain a lot of muscle mass. And this is kind of on that narcissistic level, but I love being lean and I love retaining muscle mass. So running really helps me with that. And like, that's a huge benefit. Right, last question. And this is a good one. Hungster47, I think it is. Han, Han G S T E R 47. How to get rid of running trauma? Brackets fear, hating, and like insecurities. How do you get real fear? Uh, how do you get rid of running trauma? It's a great question. Um, yeah, running trauma is something I've had a lot in the past. Like, going for runs, you know, with footy, you're doing the beat test, doing the 2K time trial, and it's stuff that you just don't enjoy. It's really high heart rate stuff, gut-wrenching, and you want to throw up the whole time. So that's like where the trauma starts for a lot of people, who, especially in Australia, or who play sport. And I'd say the best way to get rid of that is to stop correlating running with that kind of running. You need to slow down. You need to pull it back a bit. Go for a run at a low heart rate. Like... Keep your heart rate under 150 beats per minute. I think it's like zone two or zone three running and just tick over the legs, breathe in, listen to, listen to some music and actually enjoy it. Like that is number one for getting better. The other thing I put down here is like insecurities. Well, I think you learn pretty quick that let's say, let's say for instance, you're overweight and you're going for a run. If you ever think that you're going to cop it for going for a run when you're over overweight. It's so the opposite. If I ever see someone who is overweight going for a run, it motivates me a whole lot. I get genuinely excited by it. And I'm like, that is so cool because they are like putting, so they, they understand that like health is probably a really important side of things and that they need to put in time and effort into their health. So they're going for a run. So if your insecurities stem from, from that, that side of it, then I think you need to really reevaluate and, you're probably making something up that's actually not there. I definitely know a lot of fit people just like love seeing people who are overweight going for runs. Um, your insecurities could come from your running form. Well, there's plenty of resources out there to help your running form. Like just YouTube it and, and work on it. Film yourself doing it and build from there. Um, but yeah, getting rid of running trauma is pretty difficult, but it's worth it once you do it. And like I'd say running trauma is something we all have just remember at the end of the day, we're not doing the beep test. We're not doing a 2K time trial. We just want to feel good. And that's what running does. Thanks guys so much for listening. Um, this is episode one and uh, I think I think it went all right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back next week with a more interview style. We'll have a guest on and I'll ask some great questions. So thanks so much. We'll see you for episode two. Bye.